is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Mark Bermilla from Hariba and he's going to tell us about their Partika laser particle size analyzer. So there are lots of different ways to measure the size of particles. The most popular technique now is laser diffraction. And probably the main reason laser diffraction is so popular is it's very uh, flexible, can measure powders, suspensions, measure very broad dynamic range. It can be used for many different applications. What I'm going to show you here is the LA950 laser diffraction analyzer. We're going to go through why it's a bit unique and how people can use it to measure a broad range of particles. The first thing you'll see is the optical bench. And with the optical bench, inside there are optics where we have two light sources. And what laser diffraction is all about is in here there's a cell. And as the particles pass through this cell, we're going to look at the light scattered by the particles using two different wavelengths of light, a red and a blue light source. And by looking at the angular intensity and the scattering of that light, we can calculate the particle size distribution. So all of the action takes place right in here with the cell in terms of the light scattering. What we need to do is introduce the sample to that cell. And with the unit you see here, we have two different ways to introduce that sample to the cell. We could use this route if the particles are in liquid suspension. Here is a reservoir. There is water or a solvent recirculating. We'll introduce the sample to the reservoir. There's a pump recirculating the sample. There's also a stirrer, and there's an ultrasonic probe if we need to add energy to the system to break up agglomerates. So when used for liquid suspensions, the sample is added here. It then passes down through these tubes, through the cell where the measurement is made. The measurement only takes about 30 seconds, 45 at the most. We then clean up the system, prepare for the next sample. That leads to one of the reasons why this is so popular. You get a quick, reproducible result in about a minute of time. So that's how we're going to do the measurements for liquid suspensions. We might also have samples where we're going to measure dry powders. So let's say we have a powder material. It could be anything from a pharmaceutical powder, it could be sugar, it could be cement. To measure it as a powder, we have two options. We could introduce it as a liquid suspension, or what we could do is switch the system over to use the dry powder feeder. The dry powder feeder accessory, which you see on the top here, includes a vibrating tray. We just load the powder onto the tray. It'll vibrate down, and after it vibrates down, it'll fit into a different cell. What I'm going to show you now is how quickly it can be changed over from measuring wet suspensions to dry powders. So all I'm going to do is detach the liquid connections. I'm going to move this tray to another position for dry powders. And we now have transformed the instrument into a dry powder system. So now what we have is a straight shot of the powder coming from the vibrating tray down into the dry cell, which you see here. At that point, it operates the same way as we discussed with the liquid sampler. As the particles pass through the cell, we look at the scattered light and we calculate the particle size distribution. In many ways, dry powders are even easier than liquid suspensions because with dry powders, after it falls through the cell, it's just collected in a vacuum. So there's really no cleanup. It actually is an easier way to keep your lab cleaner. And the sample just ends up in the, in the vacuum and you change that bag once a month. So what you see here is a system flexible for suspensions and for powders. It's quick, it's reproducible, can measure a very broad dynamic range of the samples we might want to measure. And what I'm going to show you next on the computer here, which is running the system, just two results which might show off some of the capability of the instrument. So here we have the software which is controlling the instrument. And we have two results here. The first result you see here shows a sample with small particles tailing off down to 100 nanometers. So that's 0.1 microns. This system, when used to measure liquid particles, particles in suspension, can measure particles down to the 30 nanometer scale range. And that is actually the smallest size particle measured by a laser diffraction analyzer on the market. So we're very good, very accurate at measuring small particles down to 30 nanometers. The result you see here, the black result, is for a dry powder. Here you see results going up to near a millimeter. So the same system, which is capable of working down in the 30 nanometer scale range, when working with powders, can work up to three millimeters, which is 3,000 microns. So very simple, easy system to use. Powders, suspensions, dynamic range from down near 30 nanometers up to three millimeters and is probably the most popular unit for all kinds of industries. The pharmaceutical, the chemical, cement, food industries. 
If you're going to buy one particle size analyzer for your lab, this is what you want to buy first. And from there, we have many other specialized tools for specialized applications where you might also want to expand into other techniques. But this is really where I'd say you usually start with your particle characterization in your laboratory. All right, thanks very much for taking us through the Partika Particle Size Analyzer. Very glad to. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to working both with you and any customers who choose to work with Hariba.